gathering actually I like for you guys to use this measurement. So it's five inches. Five by five by three. If you want to use two different pieces of um, colored fabric, you can do that. All right. Now, when you're doing gathering, you're going to be doing rows of stitches, basting stitches. So we'll turn this to three and a half. piece of fabric, of course, you know, this is your 5 by 9 piece of fabric. Okay. So we're going to sew this the long way, and we're trying to get all of this fabric to fit in between these 5 inches here. Okay. So to do that, we'll start sewing on the edge of our fabric, and actually, I'm going to line up the edge of my fabric with the center of my presser foot the outside of my presser foot because I need to get three rows of stitches between the half an inch seam allowance. Whenever you're gathering anything, I know um, some people like to do one row just to be quick about it. Um, two rows is always good. One row is never good. Three rows is always the best. So you want to fit these three rows of stitches between that half an inch seam allowance because it has to be hidden. So let's say you're doing a skirt. Can you see back here? Yeah, I see. Pretty well. So let's say you're doing a skirt that's going to have gathers. All this fabric here is gathered in. We've got to hide these stitches. So I'm going to start at the edge of my fabric. So let's say it's about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So I'm lining my fabric up with the... Um, the end of my fabric in the center of the right side of my presser foot. All right, so that's going to give me that eighth of an inch on the edge. Now, when you're sewing these, you don't need to do a back stitch because we're going to need to pull those threads. Back stitches will lock your threads in place, so you need to leave that open. Okay. So we'll just start sewing. Now, also, when you're sewing these stitches, you want to keep them side by side. If they overlap, then you won't be able to pull your threads. So, you have to make sure when you're sewing them that they are side by side. You're not overlapping. Try to keep them as straight as possible. Okay, so for the next one, I'll do the same thing, actually. Placing the middle of my presser foot on that first stitch line. So they're about an eighth of an inch apart. Okay, and I'm still not at my half an inch seam allowance. I still have some more room. Okay, so that keeps them lined up straight side by side. If they overlap, when you start to pull them, they're going to be locked. So if any of the stitches overlap, that locks them. So make sure they do not overlap. And then I'll do the last row. Okay, so even doing this last row, I'm still not at that half an inch. So I still have a little bit of room to do when I actually attach this to the other piece. This will all be in case, and we shouldn't see any stitches. Now, if you're sewing, a lot of times people do this really very quickly. It may not stay within that seam allowance. And even if you pull the threads and you're a little bit outside of the seam allowance, um, when you sew the bottom of your skirt to this, the bottom of your skirt to the top, then you can always just cut off whatever stitches are hanging out of it. All right, so now we're going to pull all of this in so it's gathered in so it fits within here. Now, you can pull either one of your threads you want to pull. Here I'm going to pull um, 
my top threads. A lot of people like to pull the bottom ones. I think it doesn't really matter. Some say that the bottom is um, looser than the top. To me, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to pull on my top threads. Those are all of the black threads here. Okay, and I'm going to be pulling from both sides. tell how it gathers in and when you're gathering you want to take your measurement here try to see okay I need to loosen this up a little bit you want to have your threads or your gathers consistently the same throughout so there shouldn't be any area where it's tighter here or looser there it should really all be the same actually I'm going to give you guys a little bit longer piece so instead of nine inches for this one if you guys can make it um, so you get a lot of gathers, we get about 15 inches long. So that gives you a tighter gather. Because this one actually, since it's almost the same, it should be 5 by 15. By, what did I say? Yeah. 15. So 5 by 15. That way you'll have a lot of fabric to gather in, and it's going to give you a nicer gather. Right. And again, just trying to keep it consistently the same. You don't want to have any areas where it's tighter here, looser there. So you really have to kind of spread them out. And measure all at the same time. All right, now. Once you finish that, then you're going to line this up. Now, another thing you can do, and sometimes I actually don't do this, but for each of these strings, you're actually supposed to take the bottom string and pull it up and tie a knot for each one of these. So I'll take my top string and I'll take the bobbin string and then I'll tie a knot for each one of these and that's going to lock them in place. So that, that will keep your gathers from moving. So you want the... You repeat that, sorry. On the end, once you finish with your gathers, you have the distance just exactly where you want it to be. Then for each one of these strings, tie a knot, oh. just like I did. And what I'm doing is pulling up that bottom thread so I have that bobbin thread and my top thread. Both of them are going to be on the top. Oh, okay. And then now I can tie a knot. That is how you're supposed to do it, as it is written in the book. I rarely do this. I actually just kind of sew it all up. But this is how you're supposed to do it. Another thing you guys can do, so you don't have to tie the um, threads on both sides, you can actually do a back stitch on this side for all of your stitches, and then you'll just pull from one side all the way over. So these are already locked, and then you can just tie on this side. But I know once you guys start sewing and you develop your own methods, then you take your shortcuts. Do you press together? Do you press this because this is... It's pressed because it's been in the book. Oh, okay. But you actually... No, I don't usually press them down because you do want them to be fluffy. Right. Yeah, so... Yeah, yours will be pressed so you don't have to press them. Just kind of, you know, steam your seam open. And kind of, um... Use your iron. Your iron just goes this way and just kind of come up into where your gathers are instead of just doing them like that okay yeah all right once you tie these strings you can cut this down so it's out of your way all right then you can 
gonna take your let's say this is a waistband we'll just call it the waistband And you can pin this in place so it doesn't move around on you. So you can pin it in place. Alright, and we're sewing with that half an inch seam allowance. Alright, when I'm doing my seam allowance, I'm always leaving that little um, fuzzy part of my fabric, the frayed end, just past that half an inch. Okay, remember when you're pinning your fabric as you're sewing, you pin from left to right, from right to left, sorry, right to left. Keep it easy to pull out. Okay, so this should measure up exactly. So like I said, when you're pressing it, you're just going to press it up, just like that. Um, you can also take your seam, you can press this open, but most times whenever you have gathers, that's going to be caught up into the waistband. Let's say this is the waistband of a skirt, this is going to fold over and it's going to be caught in. So you don't have to really press it open, per se. You can kind of steam it open a little bit to get a nicer finish, but yeah, you want to keep it loose like that. So those are our gathers. Now we have...